No One Likes Us Clothing is the clothing range designed by Millwall fans for Millwall fans. Caps, t-shirts, polos, they've got it all. Visit noonelikesus.co.uk for the full range. Or, if you're in Bermondsey on a match day, why not have a pint in the Blue Anchor pub and pick up a Nolu polo shirt, Nolu clothing, www.noonelikesus.co.uk. Listening to Acton Moorwalk, broadcasting from the beautiful South Bermondsey. Except no substitute. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to a manic Monday. And joining me on this uh, lovely Monday morning is the man himself, the boy himself. You went up to Norwich, Mr. Harry Warren. How are you, H? I'm all right. I've just about got over the uh, the bright yellow army of replica shirts. It's very different up there, mate, isn't it? It's. Uh, I was trying to. I was saying to um, to Neil the other day, Fizz, um, how nice it is. I always find it, it's, it's overwhelmingly nice up there, isn't it? In Norwich, it's not not a place that you you fear going for the you know for off the field reasons, anyway. No, it's a bit panto, and it they give it they gave it really like they really insipidly gave it like they've got that stand. <laughs> uh, uh, anyone that's been, you know that they're. The things that I can't abide Norwich for is their screen that turns to show their goals. Because inevitably, Mill will lose there, obviously. Right? <laughs> inevitably, uh, yeah. Inevitably. But they turn that fucking screen away so you can't see the goal, which is no good for Millwall fans because we have to blame someone for the goal. It can't just be, oh, it was good play. It has to be, it was that fucking fault. And also, you want to yeah, see the yeah. goal again. So they turn it away from you. You're on that sort of side section. So you've got a load of five-year-olds giving you shit from the left-hand side. Then you've got a load of fat DPS Replica. replicants, replica shirts standing on the right-hand side. And then I just, I, I've, I've never seen us get a point there. I mean, I, I went no. there the year we were, I went there the year we were uh, three, two up going into injury time and lost four, four three. Um, yeah, know, I was at that I, game. I was at that game. Yeah. Um, I, I, we have, I a, we have a very poor think... track record there. I don't know why. Um, 1968 since we lost one there. I was eight years old, seven years old, I think, when that game took place. I was aware of Millwall's existence at that point in my life. Um, but for some reason, we always struggled. And we, we, I thought on the first half, um, Harry, um, just have a quick look at the, the starting 11 before we go to the first half. Bart in goal, a back line, which I thought looked quite a good back line. Um, whether you want to use Ryan Leonard as one of your um, defenders or not is another question we'll come on to. But Leonard... Hutchinson and Murray Wallace, um, either side, Danny Mack and Scott Malone, who we'll come back to. Um, midfield, George Savile, Billy Mitch, uh, George Honeyman, and up front, Benedict Afobe and Tyler Bury. Defensively, Harry, the the first half, the consensus is that we, we did pretty well to close out a fairly expensive looking Norwich side. How did you how did you see the first half? There wasn't much to report, I don't think, in action terms. Um, I thought we were all right. I, it was. I thought we were all right, but we let them sort of. They were building pressure as it went on. Like I did. Well, think they were. A, yeah. Like I did feel it was coming. Also, the fact that the ball, whenever we put the ball forward, it just doesn't go forward. It doesn't stick. A phobie this season in the five games. I know people liked him last season. I wasn't his biggest fan, and the reason I'm not his biggest fan is that he's not very good unless we've got the ball. And we haven't had the ball a lot this season. And no, we don't keep the ball. No, I think that's, um, that's, that's, we've got that's no right. ball retention. The only one that tries to keep the ball is Billy Mitchell. And Billy Mitchell keeps the ball by going sideways when we don't need to. But then also goes forward when he shouldn't. Um, so decision making is a, is a problem. The, the, for me, like the, the back line's fine. But why you're playing, like, why we're playing Ryan Leonard, right, as a, as a centre-back. When Ryan Leonard is the only one that carries the ball out of the midfielders that we supposedly got is beyond me. Well, we want him we're... further forwards, Harry, don't we? I mean, yeah, you know, do. you don't really want him as a defender, in my opinion. I mean, he's a great, he's a great, like, he made a great tackle. Like, he's a good inside right back, like, in terms of of Danny Mac's bombing on. But Danny Mac don't look right. Like, uh, it's, it's cruel to the boy to keep playing someone that's out of form. Scott Malone doesn't look right. It's cruel to keep playing him. Right, these players are mm. out of form, and they're key to this formation. You know, the back three. You could have, like before Daniel Ballard, the back three was Cooper, Hutchinson, Murray, Wallace. They're the three centre halves, right? Yep. Yeah. Now Cooper hasn't played well, but he always plays better next to Hutch. You haven't played Hutch all season, 
he come in, I thought he'd done well, to be honest, considering that that was his first game back, right? Yeah. So you play Hutchinson, Cooper, Murray Wallace. They're the three centre-backs for me. I don't think it's up for discussion. We haven't kept a clean... We've kept one clean sheet all season on the first game of the season against the Stokes side who didn't look like they'd got off the train, let alone anything else, right? (laughs) I don't understand why you don't go... It's not working. We've conceded far too many goals. I think we've conceded two goals in every game other than the first game of the season, go back to basics, go back to five at the back with a three centre halves that we trust. Whether we lose something in terms of attacking ability or I, I don't understand what we're losing because at the moment, whatever we're trying isn't working defensively. So I think what we're, what we're losing is this kind of um, mythical thing of quality on the ball, because obviously Cresswell has come in from Leeds Um that was interesting. I, I'm sure, I read somewhere, and I haven't got it to hand, that Gary Rowett said that Cresswell had a, a, a twinge before the game and therefore didn't start. He, but he sat on the bench. So, um, you know, I I, I, I don't know. Um, as far as... Uh, well, even though he wasn't on the bench, really, so I'm talking... I'm talking yes, he is on the bench. He's Does he come tiny, on? Yeah. A tiny little, tiny little font there. Apologies, listeners. This is why you're tuning into my show for my eyesight issues. Um, yeah, he is on the bench. So, you know, he can't have had that much of a twinge. But I, I, I think he's, he's, I don't know if he's on any kind of must play X number of minutes kind of arrangement or what, but um, that doesn't seem, it seems very limiting from our point of view if we've signed up for that. I guess he's he's there to bring Premier League quality on the ball, Harry. That's that's the reason that he's, you know, has been named as a starter so far. Yeah, I, I understand that. And I get, I get why people like him and I understand why we signed him, but you know, it's it's a why that you know you're a player in a team, and the team if the team functions better with the other three centre halves, and you know if that may, uh, I, think well, that'd yeah. be, I think that'd be extremely harsh on Murray Wallace to take Murray Wallace out, but Murray Wallace hasn't particularly played well. I thought the pro- the problem is is as that game went on. I mean, in the first half, I think we'll come on to it um, later. Well, I don't want to sort of jump the gun, but I thought the substitutions in the second half were awful. Um, the Not removal the... of Bury, I, I found. I mean, I, I love, I love uh, Vogel Sama, um, and I'd like to see Vogel Sama. Yeah, from that, from in... that point. Sorry, I'm, I should quantify that. He's in the two players, the two new boys, Fleming and and Vlog Slammer, yeah. uh, are absolutely fine. I've got no problem bringing them to one. It's taking Tyler Bury off to leave. Scott Malone, who can't defend, let's get this right. Scott no, Malone no. cannot defend. Scott Malone shows people inside when he should be showing them down the line. If you if you cross the ball back into a place where there's loads of people, right? They he doesn't he stops the cross, right? As a defender, he mm. stops the cross by showing you inside to shoot, which isn't really what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to send them down the line. Um, so Scott Malone basically can't defend, can't go backwards. And Norwich kept coming forward two on one against Scott Malone. And no one was coming across. Ben Kofobi doesn't do that job, doesn't do a left midfield job, which is fine because that's not his job. But you've taken any kind of left-sided player off. We've only really got one and you played him up front. And I thought Bury done all right. I, I don't think he's going to be a well-beater every game. Jeb Wallace wasn't a well-beater every game at the age that we took Jeb Wallace when we were in League One. But they yeah. learn by playing and they learn in big situations against better quality players. And I think Bury, the way he carries the ball, he's the only ball carrier we've got. He's the only outlet like that. And I really, really can't see a way that you don't play him. Benny Kofobi seems to have this mythical... There's a few players that Gary Rowell will not drop. And Benny no, Kofobi, well, this is what I was going to come on to. Benny Kofobi is one of them. Yeah. yeah, we're persisting with Benick. He's, he, I don't think he's in, having his best season. He's not scored a goal, I don't think. If I'm no, right. none of the attackers have scored a goal. So, and yet we do have the the we, we do have the 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 possibility of a decent looking um, forward uh, set of players in Fleming, who was fit and came on. I like the look of Fleming, and Vogel Samu looks like he could be a, a a kind of a cult hero at the den because he does produce these um, you know unpredictable I mean, shot, moments. Harry, that I mean, shot was fucking ridiculous. Like from our angle, it, like, I was there, as soon as it left his foot, I was like, it's in. I was like, it's yeah, like, keeps yeah. not. And it nearly beat, like it was straight acting crawl, but it nearly beat him for power. I mean, fucking like, and it was what? It looked like it was 30 yards. Like, I, I don't know. I it was from distance. It. He, 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 I mean, the, I'm thinking back to the Swansea game where he hit the crossbar with, again, a very unusual... It was sort of uh, like a chip. Like a chip from the corner yeah. penalty area and he hit the crossbar. 
So what I really like, whether he can do it as a starter, well, we don't know till we till he starts, really. But um, he produces unpredictable moments, and that's gonna that's that's what we've not had much of. He, this stri- he sort of strikes me as a Gregory Morrison type forward. Do you understand what I mean? Just a, a work combo. Horse, but yeah, like a a Lee Gregory kind of pressing y work horsey forward, but with Morrison sort of. Sort of like the aura of Steve Morrison. Do you do you get what I mean? Like that aura of I'm I. He sort of looks like he wants to be the main man, which I like that in a striker. You you've got to have a bit of bollocks about you to be a striker, especially at like a club like us. To be honest, because you know you you're not going to get many chances playing for us, are you? you might no, and you've got to be prepared to. You got to be prepared to fail. And what I like about uh, well Vogel Summer from what we've seen of him. But also what I love about Tyler is that he's unafraid to fail. He, he will take those risky moments on. And sometimes you're going to step on the ball. Sometimes it's going to go badly wrong on you. But, you know, that he's from that kind of tradition at Mill or the Paul Ifields where, you you know, you never quite know what you're going to get when they get on the ball. And I love that. That's that's what I one of the reasons why you go to football is for those kinds of moments. I like the look of Fleming coming forwards. I, I do think that a phobie is not. Um, maybe he's out of form or what, or what it is, but he's not suited be, to the system we're playing, Harry. I, I've got to be honest, like it's got to be a psychological mind fuck to think you're going to Bruges to play in the Champions League and lose out on your deal. Like I, I don't care who you are. I and know come back down, come back down Hilderson Road after, after, yeah, after sitting. Exactly, right, like <laughs> let's let's have it right. I mean, I saw someone online saying that Grabham's not got a fucking deal and all this kind of stuff, and there's people wanting to lynch people. I don't give a fuck. Like it was ten years ago. Like I know Mill will forget nothing, but. He's fucking better than Ben Kafobi. I'm sorry, he is. He scores more goals. Um, and you want to get promoted? Surely you do. Listen well, he's a proven. I mean, look, 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 we're not advocating Lewis Graven particularly, but, but he's, I'm, I'm he's a, he is a proven goal scorer. At this that's level, that's the Harry. difference. That is the difference yeah. in levels. Look at what like Norwich. They scored two two goals. The the second goal fucking is is so. The two players that I didn't want to be dealing with that ball were the two players dealing well, with that ball. I agree. I mean, the first goal, I've just been looking at it prior. I hadn't looked at it since Friday night, listeners. So it was just before I started talking to Harry. The first goal like, comes from Ben Kofobi not trapping a ball, didn't it? Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't didn't pick up on that. I thought it was quite a nice passing move. No, it was, um, but they got the ball back. But we basically lumped the ball up to Ben Kofobi, who can't trap a bag of cement. He definitely had his team. Well, the ball don't stick that, when right? it goes forward. I mean, Benick is part of that. I'd include a lot of uh, the, the, you know, the midfield going forwards, really, including the, the two forwards um, to some level on, on Friday night anyway. Right. Uh, it wasn't Bury's best game on, on Friday, but... Um, certainly um, nothing sticks when it goes forward. So we're under the cosh a little bit in the second half. But, um, you know, in fairness to Norwich, and they are an expensively assembled side. I'm just reading. They are, but the, they were out of form. They were out of form. But, I mean, you know, the the, the, the player that scored, uh, what's his name? Josh uh, Sargent. Sargent, the American. 9.5 million euro signing from uh, German, or Werder Bremen, I think. He was, but um, he also blanked in the Premier League. <laughs> He didn't blank against us. Did no, he didn't. We make strikers who blank look good. That's what we've always traditionally done. You fucking guarantee people always, always people score their first. They might score two goals in the season and both of them are against us. And they go, oh, are they going to go on a run? And they don't score again. It's just fucking us. But Nice triangular passing movement. And he put it away. I mean, whether Bart should have done better, whether the defence should have done better. Like, don't know. From, from our um, angle, it just looked like he just fucking beat him at his near post with power. But like... It, it was it was coming like it was coming. The goal was coming. You could feel them growing in in expectation. And you know when we got to half time and we hadn't conceded in sort of ten fifteen minutes, I thought fucking hell, that's the longest we've gone without conceding all season. Mm. Get to half time and basically it was like we restarted the first half again. We fucking conceded within the first five minutes of the half, and the game plan goes out the window. We just are very, I don't I, I, very fragile, some, Harry. Something very... something's not right. We've got the like the the side right. The ingredients are there, right? Yeah. There are good players in that side, but at the moment, like you know, Germans can't do cooking. Our chef at the moment is a German. <laughs> it's a stereotype right? that's way off the mark. It's not. Yeah. It's not. I've eaten in Germany. It's lovely. <laughs> there's a reason Hitler was a vegetarian, right? Let's fucking let's let's get this right. <laughs> so, so that's what it is at the moment, right? We've we've got all the ingredients, and we've somehow let the Germans do the cake, and it's horrible, <laughs> right? And, and, and and it's not right, but I don't know. I don't know whether or not it's because we're not meant to be playing this style. I don't know whether or not, like, obviously the injury to Fleming's not ideal. You don't spend one point seven million pounds at Millwall no, and then have him sit out the and the then have him sit out the first five games. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
But all in all, let's let's put some mill let's put some non millwall bipolar everything's going wrong on it. We are sitting where we're sitting in the table. We've probably picked up a few points. We're very good at home. We've got what one point away from home out of what three games. Yeah. It's not great. I mean, welcome to Mill Strong at home. Not so good away from home. That's been well, the story of my, to... my life. You know, um, that's always been so. It's um, true, but it does need to like. That's fine. Would our season be judged on going to Norwich, Sheffield United, and and Swansea? Um, no, probably not. They're three of the harder away games that we're going to have to go to this season. But that means that you're going to have to now pick up points elsewhere. So you are going to have to go to places mm. that we traditionally don't get anything from, your Blackpools, your Wiggins, places like that. You're going to have to go and get three points now if you want to be in the in the shout for the top six. This league, looking at the results that have been going on, is not very good, i.e. there are not a for them. There are not a, a Bournemouth. After, after we're only played five games, so I've got yeah, no... Yeah, so early days, Some people yeah. say don't look. But Norwich are good. They're, they've got good players, but they haven't started like a... You haven't gone, you know, they haven't gone and won five games. They're beating us, and I don't think they've won another game. So, you know, you sit you sit there and think, is it is it a year where our home form will carry us close? Yeah, probably. You know, we can't afford It's to a lose very that. different ball game at the den, Harry. I mean, you know, I mean the, the atmosphere at both of the um the games that I've been to, uh, uh, this, we've all been to this the start of the season against Stoke and then against Coventry. The atmosphere has been very good, and it it does give a different um, feeling to players that maybe need a bit of a lift and a carry at times. Um, I mean, Malone very much for me. I, I know that Gary Rao was talking about a foul for that second goal uh, on Malone. I mean, there may have been. I, I, if it's if there's a foul, it's a marginal decision. You're not going to get I, it. I think. Look, I think it was. And Danny Mac, he's in. He's in the mix. He's as in well. there. I, I I think it was a foul, based on what the referee had given four fouls in the game. Yes. I think the referee was soft as shit during the game to any Norwich foul, um, and I think you get that. I don't think. I also think this is a wider point. You shouldn't have Premier League referees, referee sides that have just come down because they have a relationship with players. Neil Warnock has mentioned this on podcast since he's retired from football management, that when he was a Sheffield United manager and they were in a champ and they went to the FA Cup semi-final, like referees have a standing relationship with Premier League players and they come down and they talk to them in a different way than what they talk to unknown championship players, which isn't right. But no, that's just human but nature. I think. Mill have to Mill have to deal with it. So when the referee doesn't give the free kick, okay, they've got an overload at the back post, okay, they score, right? But it should never have come to that. I'd rather fucking we'd all rather, right? So Malone or Danny Mac fucking clatter in there and give away a free kick from deep because in the past you trust Millwall to deal with that set piece defense. Well, you're better off with a deep free kick than as as it works out. Both of them shouldn't have been pushed off the ball one way and the other. The boys got past them, and he finishes very very well. It's a sergeant again, wasn't it? To to complete that move makes it two nil. And I, I, yeah, I mean, you know, we we staged a bit of a a bit of a rally. I think we were coming back. I think, I think we were coming back into it before the second goal. I think the second goal kills us. Um, but again, it's just a bit a bit strange. I would like to see two two maybe three players come in, but I can't see it. I think every time we're linked with someone and there's any other club involved, I give up hope. Um, yeah, they they. That, uh, that's it. <laughs> That Sims, who I didn't know about before the season, is scoring every week for Sunderland, so that's going well. Um, Players seem somewhere. to prefer to go to other places. I don't know why, oh, I listeners. No, Do you, can you can you tell why. me why they want to go to other places? I Look, I, I just think I think we need the left back. I think it's very clear we need the left wing, we not a left back. We need a left wing back. Um, just this competition below. for Scott who needs a rest well, and he needs he needs some time out, doesn't he? Well, my, my point with that position and a, and a right wing back. Um, because yeah, I agree. Because Leonard shouldn't be playing there. Because Leonard, at the moment, for me, there's there's a few. The midfield's weird as well. The midf- I don't understand. Like it's not great. We're five games in. Can you tell me our best midfield three? Because I can't. I don't know mm. what it is. Because I haven't. We've played all different combinations of it. Well, this is one of my it. points I was going to make, Harry. I mean, injuries have played their part. So to some extent, you've got to take that into account. But we still seem to be as for so long kind of fumbling for our best starting eleven and their best players in, in whatever position. You know, it, I can't believe that Ryan Leonard's going to spend the season as their, as one of our first choice defenders. It, it, he he does need to be further forwards, doesn't he? He does. Also, the fact that he's got such good recovery runs, is it not screaming out that he's the DM? Is he not the defensive midfielder? 
Is he not the one that's going to break the play up? And if he's a defender, he's the most mobile out of those midfielders, surely, right? So I know everyone's, it's, it's fashionable to dig Billy Mitch out, right? Mm. And I kind of understand why, because what happens is at Millwall, as we all know, is that you've got to have one of your own that's got to get cunted off every year, right? So it used to be Thompson. Before that, it was John Marquez. Before that, it was Sid Nelson. It's Danny it's Mann, Billy's, Billy Billy's Mitch, turn right? now, it's is lucky, it? Right? So we picked one, right? So Billy Mitch is the sacrificial lamb. Yes, I admit, sometimes he makes the wrong decision, but he kind of plays, he literally does what Ryan Woods does. Or, or did right, so he's obviously being told that because I don't think that he wants to play that way. But he's been told to spray the ball wide and and, mm. and make progressive passes in a very yeah. slow way. This works when you have the ball, like Norwich, for a lot of the time. It doesn't work when you need to be the counter attacking side away from home. That's why we play better with it at home than we do away, and we don't really sort of switch on to that mentality shift. But Billy Mitch needs a probably needs to be dropped not in the sense that he's done anything particularly wrong but i just think take him out the firing line a bit like scott malone a bit like danny mack problem is is they're three positions where we sort of hang our hang our hat on these players will play all the time and we don't really need anyone else the midfield situation is savile scored um against, against coventry and um i thought he was unlucky not to score against swansea to be honest i think he's it was definitely a ball on a shot that he had from sort of on the edge of the box oh right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah um yeah so i think savile deserved the start but i don't know where you know in the game against norwich was that the game to start him in when you're not going to have any of the ball and nothing's going to knock down and nothing's going to come now um it, it's just a it's a weird i don't think gary rowick does very well when he doesn't know what to pick he's sometimes better with less is more like that run where we had covid when, well, we, had when we were down players. to 13 first exactly. uh, like we were, senior players and then kids um, and we were better we were better in a little run then like realistically and i'm not trying to be negative because it shows character in the squad to get the results that they've got but didn't play well against commentary conceded two goals could have quite easily lost that game without their keeper basically gifting us one the game against Swansea, we deserve nothing from. Absolutely madness to get two goals in two minutes. Fantastic, but two goals in two minutes. We lost again there. We could be sitting here on three defeats and going like, having a game next Saturday against Burnley, and yeah. then he'd have lost four in a row, and all of a sudden everyone's going, fucking hell, we spent 1.7 million on a player who ain't playing. You you could hear the knives being sharp at Danny Alderton Road. You know, it, it would have happened. As it is, we've picked up points when maybe we haven't played well. But we do need to start playing well. You can't keep fluking results because no, no, just we, lady we get luck won't down. live with you. No. Lady luck won't live with you. So no. you know you're going to play a good Burnley side. This is it Burnley or is it Reading? I've confused. Uh, Reading's myself. next up, isn't it? I think right, we're going so to got Burnley Reading. in a week after that. So we got Reading. So we got Reading this week. Reading, obviously, I thought were fucking awful, and then they went and beat Blackburn, who were top. So you know yeah. what Reading turns up is is another thing. Paul Wintz will be the pantomime villain. You know, yep. let's hope that then rises the occasion, but <laughs> in, in its usual. And I think he's some plays with Reading now, doesn't he? Tom and so, Tom and Paul Winch, you get two for the price of one, ladies That's and gentlemen. That's right. You've got, you got, you got a brace of inces to have a go at and generate yeah, some hatred. So West, get the Dan atmosphere Ham's going. Slag. West, yeah. West Ham slag. Uh, you know, all that, all that <laughs> And his son. Stuff. And his son, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, like, it's, it is what it is. Like... Uh, I don't know what to think of us. And that's, I don't know if that, is that the pervading feeling? Like, I think we could be good, but we're not very good at the moment. And I think that's the, that's the thing. I think, I think that sums it up quite nicely. Goals. Yeah, we no. Stop we, we, conceding we, goals and putting ourselves under pressure. We also need, we need to, to stop giving away two goals because that's what we've done repeatedly. We, I mean, and you're right. I think there is character in the size. I'm not going to sit here and make it into a knock fest. There are players that are out of form, um, but they're still, you know, they're still good players, Millwall players. Um, but we do need to stop conceding by hook or by crook, and we do need to work the midfield out. I think that's that's where the game on Friday night got away I think from us a need, little bit. I think we need another winger, either a left side or a right side, and then move Bury either way um, because Bennett's injured, and you can't trust Bennett not to be injured. Um, mm. I think we need a left back, and I think possibly a right wing back as well. But but are we going to get them? I mean, like. Now, realistically, they've signed Vlog Slammer, so they've got three strikers and Isaac Alofi is the fourth. Is, is, they're not going to sign another striker, so you are now looking at those three positions that I've just mentioned, probably. All right, well, I hope you are. But you, we'll be linked to someone mad, because that's us. We'll, but we'll probably be linked to some 35-year-old Premier League journeyman who's looking for a last payday. 
Yeah, I, I mean, Lewis Graben's an interesting call. I can't see it happening, and I'm not sure that the... Um, I don't the know if any party involved in what we've just mentioned... Would want, there, would would want, want to go that. for this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, does there Lewis, does Lewis up... need it? Do we need it? I, well, I, mean, I, I think I... he might need it because he fucking turned down Rotherham. I mean, how, how many options can you have if you turn down Rotherham? But I mean, is he at this level? He scores goals, but I mean, there are other strikers you could sign. I could quite easily see him ending up at Luton, to be honest, because Luton haven't started well. Um, and now Watford have sold Saar. I could see. The guy did the guy get twenty goals at Luton last season or nearly twenty goals? I can't remember what his name was, he was but I he, think... was, he was he was he uh, was in rich form, wasn't he? It's, yeah, so uh... maybe they Watford might have a dabble. Um, we'll, probably we'll in and they might open it, but there's ten days left in the transfer window as we sit here. A lot of, that's a, a long, long time in football. Um, but maybe 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 Millwall will pull a rabbit out of the hat. I, I mean, I keep seeing all these players that we let go on freeze do quite well and end up in the Premier League. So. I don't know who's in charge of that, but he's a Harry Toffolo. Um, yeah, Harry Toffolo hurts. Zach Lovelace hurts. He's scoring freely for Rangers B side. They play in the uh, Scottish competitions up there. They have a B side. Um, yeah. And there we are. That's the story of our all lives. Don't worry. We kept Isaac Alofe. Don't worry. Don't worry. We kept Isaac Alofe. <laughs> there we are. Big thank you to Harry Wilber. That's, that's harsh. harsh. That is harsh. That's harsh on Isaac. I'm not saying it in that way, but you, you <laughs> understand totally. There's no point keeping the boy if you're not going to play him or not no, send no, him no. out on loan. So no. you know we've got to make. We're very bad at treating young players well. To be honest, we really are. We are. Big thank you, Harry Warren. Um, we'll be back after these messages with new voice of the show, Matt Richards. Achtung, Mailball. Hi, Nick, it's Angelo. Um, just a quick little little um, chat about last night's game. Um, I want to talk really individually about the players last night. Um, Bart had a dodgy kick. Can he do better for that first goal? It was hit with a lot of power. I don't know, maybe a little bit dodgy. Uh, the defence, um, I'm much happier with Hutchin in there. Leonard is looking probably our best player at the moment. Looks up for it, looks really fit. Um, Danny Mac average game, Malone average game. You know, both of them are at fault for that goal, really. Yeah, it could have been a foul, but they need to be stronger. Two against one to stop Sargent from going through for the second goal. I, I, I see where Rao is coming, complaining about it, but I think our players need to be stronger there, you know. Cooper got dropped, which I think was a good thing. He looked a little bit leggy against Swansea. Um, could do him good being out of the team for a bit. The midfield, I thought, was so slow. I thought Billy was slow. I was so, so disappointed with Honeyman last night. Uh, he was so off the pace. It, it was like when he was chasing around, he was nowhere near the ball. I've got to say, I don't know if he's carrying a knock or whatever, but... Um, but I, honeymoon was so disappointing last night. I, I, I was I was pretty 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 uh, low about his performance. Um, just just looked off the pace. A phobie. A, just couldn't get in the game. His touch was awful last night. Bury barely touched the ball. Um, yeah, obviously when we made the subs, it did it did look like it made a difference. You know the the German. Um, and and Zian Fleming, uh, it just we just looked, you know, that fantastic shot from uh, from the German guy. Um, I know that the Norwich keeper just gets a little touch to it. Um, listen, we've lost two away games, one at Norwich, who are going to be out there, let's face it, and, and one at Sheffield United. So, to be fair, it's good that we've got these away games out of the way. Um, if we can get these guys fit now, you know, the German and Zian Fleming, uh, Bradshaw. We're going to be all right, mate. We are going to be all right. I'm not that disappointed. You know, obviously, I, I am disappointed when we lose a game. But in in the whole context of things, I think um, I think we're going to be all right, mate. But um, very big concerns about Honeyman last night. You know, I've said it before. I prefer, I think Honeyman should play in the midfield, not as the 10. But, you know, I just didn't... I, I just think he looked awful last night. And he, he got... He got another yellow card as well because he was so slow to make the challenge but, um, after he lost the ball. Um, so, yeah, but um, I'm still positive and I think once we get these, you know, the, the two foreign chaps uh, fit, 
Um, I think I think they look they both look good and um, get Bradshaw back on. So yeah, just very disappointing. A Phoebe, Bury, and Honeyman last night, and a little bit Billy as well. I don't think Billy had a great game, um, but uh, but yeah, onwards and upwards, mate. They got a week, uh, just over a week to rest, and uh, hopefully we'll smash ready next Saturday. Come on, you Lions! Hello, Nick. Just Barry Mooney again. Nice to talk to you again. Just say, I, I really enjoy the shows you're doing, Neil Fizzler. Wonderful. Really funny. Good entertainment. Thanks a lot, mate. Bye. Achtung, Mailball. Welcome back after the break, dear listeners, and welcome to the show, Two New Voices. Well, they're not new voices. They've been around a while, one way or the other. Welcome to Matt Richards. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hi, Nick. Good to be back. And I'm regular. In fact, you sent me a great voicemail, John. I'm not going to use it now because I've got you physically on the show. John Rankin. Hi, Nick. Hello, Matt. Now, Hi, boys, we were, we were just talking off air. We had done the most brilliant conversations, listeners, often that when I'm not recording anything <laughs> worth recording. But we were just debating the, 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 the Gary Rowett. I mean, I, it's been a strange season, chaps, isn't it? Um, in the, in the, it's been intensely average really so far. We've got two wins under our belt, one one draw, and now two losses. Um, and we, you know, it's early to be looking at the league table, but we are reasonably placed in the league table. We're not actually in the top six now, but we're not we're just not far off of it. Um, that's not a bad start, but I don't know about you, Matt. I, I feel like the fizz has not yet exploded from my champagne bottle. You know, it's it's been a very mediocre start in some respects. Is that fair? Do you think? I think it is. I think it's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's all part of the expectation, isn't it, and the build-up. And, you know, start the transfer window, we had nothing coming in. It was doom and disaster. And some, you know, Fleming join us and we get the boys in from Leeds. And then it's looking positive. Some decent results-ish pre-season. Fantastic first game, Stoke. There's only one way to go, isn't it, if you're Millwall. <laughs> it's down, isn't it, really, isn't it? So, you know, and it's, like, but we, we, know, we know it's going to come. But it still hits us when it hits us. Um, so, and, you know, some of the defensive calamities. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, I think you're right. It's, I think, I don't know, average. I thought just slightly above average, I think. I was looking at the table earlier. If I was a Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough fan at the moment, I'd be, I think they're on one point or something like that. Yeah, so, they're, they're, you know, uh, they're struggling, aren't they? I would yeah. be um, spitting feathers then. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit like that. It's very early in the season to be talking like this, listeners. But, uh, I mean, John, we were just talking off air, mate, weren't we, about um, that kind of pull between Gary Rowett's um, professional um, persona, I'm going to put it that way, and the very Millwall desire for there to be um, high emotion. And, you know, we were having a laugh about the scuffle uh, towards the end of the Swansea game. Um, we, I think we're all, every, any Millwall fan of any, of, of any, um, you know, if you think about things, you're always torn between that desire to do well and to, to be balanced and that desire to have a fight at the end of the time. <laughs> you want to see there to be some, some spark out there. And I think, um, with, I think Gary Ram is still trying to find the, the spark part of, of management at the den. Do you think that's a, that's a fair comment? I do. Um, I agree entirely. I mean, we said before the game, if, I, if you know, if I was John Berylson, I'd be saying, right, son, you got everything you want, over to you. The ball is very much in row, it's caught for me. And, you know, as someone who's known managers like George Petchy and Ian Holloway and, you know, Gordon Jago, who's actually a good manager, actually, Gordon Jago, but going right mm. the way back, you know, yeah. row is very professional. and But I think he's over-professional. Um, I think there's too much media training. I know he goes on Sky as a pundit, doesn't he? And you know, he does, there's yeah. too there's too many phrases. I mean, you know, he he tries to polish a turd sometimes, and you've got to go in front of the cameras and say, look, right, there were some mistakes tonight, and we're gonna we you know we're gonna clamp down on that, and I'm not happy. And I think to uh, you know, some of the performances in the first half at Sheffield, uh, I was there. Coventry, I was there. And Norwich, I was there. I wasn't at Swansea, but that was even worse. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, that's an embarrassment from the all supporter. But we were built on 
the legacy of Harry Kitchener and Harry Cripps, you know, and then some great defenders in the, you know, going forward uh, into modern times, Keith Stevens and people like that, you know, and that, it was it was men against boys, men against boys. I was never so embarrassed as I have been at both Coventry and, and Sheffield, um, and you can't allow that. And, and yet you watch the, the videos afterwards with Gary Rowett, and it's, well, you know, um, there's, there's one or two aspects we've got to work on. I mean, for fuck's sake, mate, this is Millwall, right? You put your foot in and you don't let people, you know, walk <laughs> through the middle of you like they're on a Sunday stroll. I Get mean, the main, the main aspect <laughs> I'd want him, main aspect I'd want him to work on, Matt, is don't give keep giving teams two goals because, I mean, we're consistently doing that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, listen, uh, we've all played a bit of football in our past. You know, I played at the back. And uh, I think I said in one of the voicemails, fuck the Cruyff turns, stop people coming through and clear your lines. Now, look at the goal, right? The second goal against uh, Norwich. Norwich. Yeah, yeah. Look how they defended that, right? It was bobbling around in the box and the centre half just levered it, levered it up to the halfway line, right? Didn't try and play out, levered it onto the flank. Joshua Sargent run after it. Danny Mack and Scott Malone looked like a couple of kids. I don't know what they were trying to do out on the flank. And uh, that was their second goal. So I think, to my mind, there is an element of, you know, asking players to be like Barcelona, you know, and play out from the... I, I, I think he's confused. And I just think we need to go back to the basics, sort out the defence... I think our problems are defensive. I, I know most of Twitter and most of the media says it's all about attack, but to me, those boys like Tyler Bury and uh, Vox Slammer and Bradshaw and Benicophobia, you let them get on with it. It's all instinctive for them. Give them the ball, you know, to let them go. But at the back, we are making schoolboy errors. And I tell you what, we're going to get punished over and over again. Um, that's, I feel quite strongly about it, actually. To be honest with you. Well, I mean, As you can probably tell. I can tell that. I can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm more than you expect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think. I think. I think you're right. I think. I think. It's, um, if you're talking about managers, I mean, it's interesting. I think I was listening to Neil Harris. I think he was on Wall Talk. Was it last year? And he was yeah. talking about how it's changed now. And you know, it's that digging out of players. You know, players are unfortunately all. That's just, this is what this is what managers seem to say. They're a lot more sensitive than they used to be, and I kind of believe that growing up in the world we're growing up in at the moment. And so it's probably may, maybe, and I don't know if this is part of the reason. Maybe it's just reticent to do that because of that. You know, it's and I think it's wrong. I think you're right. So you're right, John. You know, it's like a kind of thing like men should be men, and so you should be able to you know bollock someone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe it's a part of that. I don't know. But going back to Norwich, I mean, you know, I think what was Malone doing on the right wing anyway? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't do much on the left, let alone on the right. <laughs> but, I think he was, but, he was trying to cover. It was, a, it, was, it, was, it was a clearance, as, as I think John yeah, said. Yeah, and I suppose yeah, he's yeah. found himself over. I think, I think. I mean, Malone, I, I, I think going back to real basics, I mean, for me at the moment, I, I'm still not sure that Gary Rowett knows his best starting eleven. Clearly, if Ryan Leonard is, yeah, is um, starting as a defender, um, Matt, I mean, that's... That's not where he plays. He's, he's going to be more used to us, I think, in midfield because one of the things that really stood out watching the telly on Friday night was how quickly the ball was coming back at us. We weren't holding the ball forwards from the forward line or even in midfield, for that matter. It was it was almost going straight back to Norwich each time. And if you keep doing that against a decent side, and they, yeah. they're a decent side, um, very, very decent. you're going to get hurt. And we got hurt, didn't we? There was, there was, no, there was no Hollywood finish this time, no uh, comeback from two behind, you know. Um, so I think midfield and, and the whole kind of forward line, it, it's for me, it's as if Gary Rowett can't quite make his mind up. Well, the, if the starting level he wants to be um, starting isn't the one that's actually playing the best. And that's, as a manager, you've got to make some hard decisions sometimes. Yeah, and I think it'll be really interesting to see who he plays at the back on Saturday, won't it? Because... You know, you could say maybe he changed it around. I mean, hopefully he changed it around because it was just appalling what happened in the previous games, really, because we were a lot more solid in the first half. Best defensive performance of the season so far against what is a top, top side, and they will be this year. You know, I mean, Sargent, I think he's worth 8 million. 
you know, so when you think that we've got Fleming two million, he's four times our top, you know, yeah. signing ever. And he's got one player in a decent team. I mean, yeah, I and you've got it. Pookie on the bench. You know, it's yeah. it's 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 amazing. We'd we'd die for Pookie in our team, wouldn't we? But the uh, the Chilean you know, is so international as well. So you know, yeah. So it was, it was a decent performance first half, but what will he do? Because I think you're right. I don't think he does know his 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 best team. Uh, he doesn't know his best defence. Doesn't know his best midfield, and probably doesn't know his his best attack yet either. I mean, John. I mean, his best defence can't long term. I don't think it can. It can include Ryan Leonard. It's got to be. Um, it's got to be either your traditional <laughs> Cooper, Hutch, and, and Murray Wallace as, as as a back three, or if you're going to persevere with the the Leeds boy, Cresswell's got to start. Um, I think I would personally be thinking more in terms of Cooper, Hutch, and Wallace for Saturday. How would you what, would you be starting Leonard in in defence this coming Saturday? Well, I suppose it depends on what the player himself wants to do. I mean, from Ryan Leonard's point of view. If he's going to secure regular minutes in the first team, I think he looks pretty happy where he is. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. I, I, I haven't got my head around the wing back. I mean, I know wing backs are the modern game, but mm. I don't think we've got them. I don't think we've got them. I think Rowett is asking too much of Danny McNamara and Scott Malone because Danny McNamara's delivery is not great. And I think the only reason Scott Malone is in the team, the only reason, is because on his left foot, he can get the ball past the first defender. You know, um, he can get the ball into the box, whether it's Volker by Crook. But we've got a lack of delivery and that. But our wing-backs, I mean, Murray yeah. Wallace has had some bad games because if you watch him, and I mean, I'm one of these supporters that watches the defence, I'm a little negative, you know, and, and I watch the defence and I see Murray Wallace is twisting in and he don't know who to cover. And Scott Malone drifts over. He's of no use defensively because he drifts over and he starts pointing like he's doing a dance, like get him, get him, get him, get him. But he picks no one <laughs> himself. Watch him. So for me, you've got to drop him and business is business. Right, it's the point agonising about it and, and personalities get into it. You say, look, son, you're not playing well, mate. You ain't making a great at the moment. See you later. Right, you're on the bench. End of. Right, do it quickly. I would, I would go for that. Sean Hutchinson, Ryan Leonard, Murray Wallace uh, across the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a back three, and then Danny Mac, and you know, I don't Who know. You're playing Mac on the left. Team. If we're dropping Malone, I know he's out of form. Wo- woeful form, I thought. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, who, who are we going to put on the left? Yeah, I would ask. I would put obviously uh, Murray, Big Murray. He's left footed, isn't he? I will get Tyler Bury up and down that flank. So you two link up, right? Murray, get that ball forward to Tyler Bury, push him out on the left, and then do his business down there and cut in, right? And I think that's the best you're going to get. Make no, it doesn't give you much, I don't give you much more defence. I mean, you, you're going to get more that, that's skill what you, with a ball. That's like, right, right. Team, you know. You've only got three at the back, so you mm. put four-man midfield out and three at the front, and your midfield's got to come back and cover. Billy Mitchell has to come back, you know. I mean, I'm a proponent of that 3-4-3, you know, the Johan Cruyff system. You only ever need three at the back. But you got to have good players, you've got to have mobile players. It is a problem because Tyler Bury is not going to be out of cover for Scott Malone, for uh, yeah. Murray Wallace. But Scott Malone doesn't cover for him anyway. No, he might as well no just... Cover him he makes it worse. He makes it worse, honestly. You know. I mean... Matt, I mean, we, we, I, I thought um, we've got minimal width at the moment. I mean, that's a, I don't know whether Tyler on the, on the left in that way would be, uh, as I think, as, as John said, I mean, Scott at the moment is not not performing, so we do need to do something on the left side. We just don't have, we seem to lack the personnel. It is a concern that there's no obvious replacement. He's, Rowett's not going to change playing five at the back. We know that. I wouldn't have thought um, so. And I, and I think, and I, don't, I personally don't think there's a problem with five at the back. I think the problem is, how you play in the personnel, you know, and I think we played well in second halves, you know, predominantly last year with five at the back because we've got players bombing forward. I think the fact is Malone's just out of form. You know, he's a great player two years ago, but he's he hasn't done anything for the last two seasons. And we've only got Topolodge at the moment, who's, you know, we're talking about putting him out on loan. So whether... How many days have we got left? Then we've still got. We've got about ten so, days of the transfer yeah. window to go. I mean, I would, I would expect there to be. That's got to be a priority. Get somebody in there. I mean, Danny Max now signed. You know, we've got Ryan Leonard as cover there. Definitely need another left left wing back in because that's a system he's he's going to play. 
Um, he's not giving us anything at the moment. I think just, just touching on Leonard, I think he's just playing well everywhere. So it's like, you know, yeah. I think this time last year, I was thinking, get him in the midfield, get him in the midfield. You know, we had Keith Neveld, yeah. Evans and, and yeah. just Billy Mitch. But now he's, he's playing so well, uh, like right back, you know, right centre half. Um, he's doing a really good job. Um, so I think we just need to get him in the team somewhere. But then then you start thinking, uh, who do we play in midfield? Well, Honeyman is a, is a player. I mean, I mean, John, I don't know where you stand on the Honeyman question. I want to love him. I, I, I want to like him. I'm, I'm kind of admiring the, the his ability to run around a lot. But something in me is telling me is I've got like a little voice at the back of my head saying he's not actually doing very much. <laughs> he's it, so far. I mean, all, all these we're only five games in. We keep saying the same caveat, but. Um, you know, Honeyman, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would love to see Leonard going further forwards. Um, I'm not sure about Honeyman at the moment. How, how do you see him, John? Well, I he scored a goal. I did score a goal, yeah. <laughs> he got sent off. Well. He drew a yellow. <laughs> He's covered all bases, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I think, you know, I, I'm very positive on him. And I think he's playing to a brief... And what I see with George Hanneman is, I think his brief is cover as much ground as possible and contain, because I don't see him going in. And when he does go in, it's when he's struggling to catch up and he gives the yellow card away by pulling someone back or stepping over them. Um, if you actually look at his closing down, he covers so much room and he does contain well. Um, I think... What we haven't got in the midfield, I think Billy Mitchell needs to just be a bit more confident and maybe go for it a bit more. Billy Mitchell can put his foot in well. He can challenge for the ball. Mm. Um, but I think we need a ball winner and a container. I think George Honeyman's being given this... Con- because he is... He's not fast. He's not quick. But he no, can he, just grind He just doesn't stop running, does he? I mean, he's yeah, so he's, much he's, got, he's kind of Brian Watson motor, you know. He can yeah. just keep on going. You watch him. He's cut, he, he must have, you know, the stats are always published. They're big on these stats, aren't they? But you can see it. And he, he must cover more ground than anyone. So I think he's been given that containment brief. So I think he's playing as well as he can do. I think the problem with uh, playing for our club is that I think it's a confidence factor as well. I mean, why do we do so well at home and so poorly away? It's a... It's, that's it's a historic true. thing. I was I was saying the same to, to speaking yeah. to Harry earlier on, John. Um, I mean, Matt, we, we've all been Mill fans for a long time. As I look at my screen here and, and see the faces staring back at me, so we've all, <laughs> you know, decent at home and poor away is is, is kind of like almost could be the club alternative club motto, couldn't it? But that's all clubs, though, Nick, isn't it? Really, I mean, you could have anybody from any club here, and they'll be true. You know, that's why people, yeah. people home records are always better aren't they? i'm not saying it's something we should focus not focus on but it's ironic because that's what you know rowett fixed when he when he took over from harris didn't they really because mm. that's when we we haven't won for ages have we but we seem to have lost that i think i mean i've on reflection you know the, the game on friday you know i think we've we've got some remnants of some positive stuff there you know tyler i thought we had a good game for his unlucky, yeah i like tyler lucky to come off um and i thought Vogel Sammer, you know, I like him. He's direct. You know, the shot, the yeah, distance and, you know, the shot he, he had in the previous game which when he hit the bar. That's great to see. And Fleming, you know, he's, he's shown some good touch, or good vision anyway. You can see what he's trying to do. It might not be coming off all the time. I mean, he clips a little ball over for Hutch to have a header, didn't he, as well, I think, in the second yeah. half as well, which Hutch could have done better with. So, you know, I'm clutching on the straws with those those three. And then you've got still got Bradshaw to come into the mix, Bennett in a couple of months. So I'm feeling more positive. And those are the sort of players you need to play well to win away, because you know we're we're not we're not scoring goals. You know the same old same old story. We're letting in goals as well, but the same old story. Not you know I think we're minus one goal difference. Just on that point, and you've mentioned Vogel Sam, who's a player that I personally love. I mean, the, the little bits we've seen of him so far, he's produced, um, he's hit the crossbar twice, and he looks like he's the kind of player that does inventive, unusual things. Um, hopefully, we'll, he'll get on, the, on on something soon, score a goal. As as Tyler is prepared to take a risk with a ball, and I, I love that too. And then, um, but it takes me to the, the Benning Afobe, who obviously um, looks to be slightly lost up front at the moment, whether he's out of form or whether he's the system doesn't suit him, I don't know. But I mean, um, John, I mean, 
would you drop a Phoebe and maybe start Vogel Sammer on, on Saturday? Would you start Fleming on Saturday? Are we at the point now where those kinds of hard decisions now have to be taken? Because that's kind of where I'm at a little bit. I don't know about yourself. Well, you know, I'm very positive on Benica Phoebe. I think he's, you know, he, he's a very good player. Stays between the posts, right? Mm. And, and scores goals by running on the shoulder of the uh, center rows. And, and, you know, he, he rinsed Gary Cahill against Bournemouth at home last season. I mean, he's a quality act, but he needs that service and he's not getting that service. He's not getting balls to run through on to. He's doing actually very well. I know he gets slated by people, but I don't agree with them at all. If you look at Norwich, he was holding the ball up, he was being jostled and pushed, and he was standing up strong, and he, he played, he's, you know, he tried to create, he played some good balls around, but that's not what he's good at. So, I, yes, I would drop him until, and I would go for, you know, you need a bit of a Roy the Rovers up front, don't you, with us? And I'd go for kind of Vogel Slammer, Definitely Tyler Bure. He'd be one of the first yeah, names on, I would, on the show. Yeah, I would go. Yeah. And then, and then do you, you know, is Zian Fleming, uh, Tyler Bury and Vogel Slammer too many Royal Rovers? You know, you know can they? Yeah. It's that team, isn't it? You know, it's you've got to sort of look at how people, I know that Benica Fobie and Bradshaw get on well, but I don't think you can, we can afford both of them up front if they're not getting the service. Maybe have a just keep rotating the squad. Just have your starting eleven. If it's not working, or if it is working, you want to give someone some minutes. Just swap them all around. But the key defensive positions, you know, goalie, centre half, uh, the 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 midfield, the, the CDM, and the number ten. You've got to get those sorted out, you know. And then you've got something to build on. And I don't, I, I, I don't know. I agree with Matt so much. I think this five. Is it five two three or five three two? I don't know. <laughs> I can't see. I'm really, I, I can't really see Gary Rowett changing from that, boys. I mean, I, I think that's just in his in his DNA almost. Um, I mean, Matt. I mean, we, we're going to come full circle back to to Gary Rowett. I mean, he, he does have an array of good attacking players there. I mean, I think Fleming looks the part. Vogel certainly looks the part. Bury looks the part. If Bradshaw is is fit, maybe on the bench, maybe he starts. I don't know. Um, but we've got to start to get get the ball forwards, hold it there, and, and give these these players a chance to actually do something. And that seems to be the the sixty four thousand dollar question at the moment. Um, Rowett is a naturally cautious man. He we, we come all the way back to the start of the conversation about his media trained, polished, professional persona again, haven't we? I mean, has he got it in him to take risks more with with the players he has available? Why did he buy him if he's not going to? You know, yeah. and it's. Um, yeah, true. I yeah. think you know, he, he's he's done that. You know, he's seen the players, and I I think back to when he when he joined, it seemed like he was quite positive and attacking. Then it was kind of under Ryan Woods, and that was dark and terrible days. But then he's, <laughs> I, I think he, I think I don't want to take people back to those days. But um, but I see. I I think he kind of started to get it a bit. You know, this is when we started to have second half performances, you know, like QPR, boom. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, what he called Mill uh, Chaos, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and so I think it gets there. And that's why I think with the players like Vogel Sammer, I think whether, it, you know, he's thinking that's probably a Mill type player. Honeyman's a Mill type player. You know, think so. whether we've seen yeah. it or not, he is. But you, you're right. His DNA is still, everyone's DNA is their DNA. And he will revert back to being kind of safe, secure, that kind of thing. And you know what? It hasn't served us too badly yet. But is it enough to make, make that next jump up from seventh or eighth to sixth or fifth? And that's that's the that's the key thing we're worried about, isn't it? Really? Um, yeah, I mean we're halfway through the opening ten fixtures. They, they the, the, the football law has it that after ten games you can see roughly who's going to be yeah. near the top and who's going to be near the bottom for the season. So we're halfway through that opening set of ten, John. And you know we're, we're not doing too badly. We're, we're sitting. Let's get the table on my phone, listeners. In 10th position, seven points. Um, just one point behind Hull and Sunderland in the top six. So, that's, I mean, that's by middle standards, that's not bad. It's just that we have been um, given the impression that we're going to be raising our sights a little this season. Early days to be complaining that we're not achieving what we set out to. But um, finishing higher than 10th must be must be an aim for, for Gary Rowan and John Barrelson, John. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's a confidence thing. You know, I think we've got the players. Um, we've got a very competent professional manager. 
We've got, you know, a good good home, we've got everything there. We've got good home support. We've got committed supporters who go away. Um, you know, I, I think it really is a confidence thing. You know, I, it's a horrible old saying, but success does build success. Mm. We, if we can get, I mean, I went to two away days last year, Coventry and Derby, and we won them both, you know, and it it was successful. And, you know, we were on a roll. We weren't going to get beat, and it was good to be a part of the crowd. The away days I've been to this year have been, you know, I didn't go to Swansea, but I've been to Sheffield and Norwich. We're dreadful. Mm. Apart from the first half at Norwich, when I was really pleased with the performance, I thought, that's good, you know, we, we were containing them. But they came out in the second half and just turned it up, you know, doled it up and started to run right. But, yeah, I think it's confidence. I think you need to, you know, pick the right players in the right position, just the basics, really, and get them up for it, you know. And and at the end of the day, look, these guys are earning 10, 15, 7,500 pounds a week, whatever. Get out there and earn your money. And uh, play hard, right? Don't take prisoners and go for it. You know, why not? Um, but I do think he's got to stop um, glossing over, you know, problems that we can all see. And I think, you know, it's sticking the carrot. And I think he needs, he, you know, he uses the carrot, but I'm pretty sure he don't use the stick enough. And, and I think he's got to have a stern word with certain players. Say, come on up your game and this is Millwall you're playing for and go for it. That that would be my approach. It's up to them now. You know, we the crowd can't do it for them. And um and the backroom staff can't, can they? They've got to, you know, they've got to grasp the nettle, put their foot in, tackle and play good basic football, and I'm sure we can do well, you know. Well the home crowd will certainly bring that to their attention on, on Saturday, Matt. I mean they've got Reading. Uh, I'm just looking at the fixtures. Reading next Saturday. Today's Monday as we're recording this. Um, so we've got a few days to play with. Let's see what the transfer market brings. But mm. the week after, we've got Reading next Saturday. Midweek game. And there's going to be a tough game at Burnley, Matt. And yeah, Burnley. Cardiff at home on the following Saturday. So there's a big nine points at stake there, actually. We could use a win on Saturday. Because who knows what we'll get out of that trip to Turf Moor on, on the Tuesday night. So... Um, they do need, you know, some quick, reasonably swift solutions. I think, Matt. I think so. I mean, I'm, re- I'll, I'll be surprised. I mean, actually, Reading have started well, haven't they? I think Reading are in top five, and that's. Uh, they won. Yeah. Um, did they win on Saturday? Saturday? I can't remember their score. Yeah, yeah I think. Um, but I still fancy us to beat them. Um, with crowd behind, I think it'd be a good crowd in there Saturday. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Burnley, yeah, it's away. It's, you know, long distance. But you never know, coming out of a draw. You know, if, if we've got Vogel Sam up, up there with Tyler, might nick a goal. You know, Cardiff, we're going to be up for that because it's Morrison coming back again. Morrison, and, uh, yeah, the Pants on Villain will be back in town. Marlon. <laughs> Marlon as well. <laughs> what can oh, possibly go wrong there? Gonna be, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's going to be a tasty one, isn't it? Um, so um, I, so yeah. I, I, I can see us getting six points at least for those from those three games, which, which I think are probably, what, 13 points after... Eight games. So I'd say, like I mean, games, I'd say games, um, yeah. those three games, six points games, in those three yeah. games there, John. I mean, that would be a very, very solid return, um, putting Burnley to one side. I mean, we've got the Panto villains of uh, the uh, Ince, was it Paul Ince and his, his was he in that song? Paul Ince and his boy, yeah. And his boy is on his Saturday. Boy, course, course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Inces are yeah, in, well. in town on Saturday, and the week after that, we've got the old, old smiler, um, Steve Morrison coming back to see us. So, and Marlon. <laughs> So um, yeah, that could be two couple of lively home games there. Yeah, I, I mean the other thing I, I, I think we should be a bit, a bit like players like Billy Mitchell. Who I know he, I don't know why he gets all this flack. I'm very positive. It's because he's I a Millwall fan. He's a Millwall fan. And well, yeah, he's one of own and all that, you know, and comes from yeah. the Sid Cup. But I, I honestly think he's work right. But he, our midfielders have got to start having shots, get, getting shots off. Yeah, yeah, you know? I agree with that. Yeah. Um, and just go for it. Have a shot. Be more confident. I think if we've got that, if we've got a solid defence, which is hard to get through. I'd keep Ryan Leonard there. Uh, he might want to play, but I'd definitely keep him there. Sean Hutchinson. I mean, they look great against Norwich. Them two, Ryan Leonard and Sean Hutchinson. Keep keep the solid boys there, and then you know, and and just inspire that bit of confidence. Get a few shots off. Well, if one of them go in, right, then you're talking about a different. 
you know, a, a different frame of mind, a different approach. You'll, I think you'll see some great things. Billy Mitch nearly scored a screamer against Cardiff last season. He was out on the left, did yeah, a quick yeah. one-two in spot, did a lovely move, whacked it, and it missed the bar. I was behind it, right? and it missed the bar by that much. If that would have gone in, you know, you'd see a different Billy Mitchell that would inspire him to do it again and do it again. They've got to build that muscle memory, but go for it. I mean, I don't think, you know, sort of, yeah, they've got to play the percentages at the back, but when they get in that opposition half, you know, have a belt, go for it, L for leather, and uh, see what happens, you know, see what happens. Well, I think that uh, it's positive to see, like, Shackleton had a shot, didn't he? He hit the bar. Yeah. He did, the yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and Honeyman's getting forward. You know, he's in the box against Norwich and he had a flick header. So they're trying. But I'm being, I, think, I think you're right just coming back to Billy Mitch. I think he's getting stick, you know, and I don't think he deserves it really. I kind of think, you know, he, he's, he's not that sort of player. I mean, you're right. He needs to add it to his game, without a doubt. He needs to add, like, you know, kind of the assists and the goals, without a doubt. That's what's missing. But, you know, like, we, we love Jimmy Addu. I can't remember Jimmy Addu doing loads of, like, suddenly, like, these perlo through balls or smacking no, no. balls in for yeah. 30 yards either. Yeah, we loved Jimmy up. So it's, I don't know, it's something in the middle psyche about, oh yeah, we liked him for a couple of seasons. Now it's like in these, the boo boy sort of thing. And I think it's a bit unfair, really. You know, it's totally well, unfair. I hear the blokes, yeah. yeah, I mean, I hear the blokes behind me and see, you know, go fucking sideways again. What's yeah. the matter with you? Yeah, right. you awful. Listen, like, it's nonsense, yeah. You know, he, he, he cleans up. Yeah, um, he, cleans he does up, all the yeah. dirty work. He'll break up play, he'll hold the ball, and he'll pass it to, <laughs> to someone in our own shirt. Now, how many times yeah. do I see, you know, I hate to say this, but Murray Wallace has been doing this a lot, just giving the ball away. Just, you know, and he's well, sitting cheap, Yeah, very things. cheaply as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just turning over very cheaply. You know, if you're going to lose the ball, lose it down in the opposition half near their corner flag. Like, don't lose it, you know, in your own half. And, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm positive on Billy Mitchell, and I think if anything, he, needs a, he does need a Me pat too. on the back, and you know, and come on, son, because he's got great things in him. I really do believe he has. Huge thank you for Matt Richards and John Rankin joining me on their Monday evening um, for the, the second part of our show tonight. Thank you, gentlemen. In good conversation. So that's Thanks, a pleasure. Nick. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, John. And um, thank you to you two, Thanks, dear Matt. listeners, for tuning in. We'll be back on Friday with Neil Fizz for our Something for the Weekend show. So until then, it's uh, Arriva Dirty Millwall and bye for now. You have been listening to Achtung, Millwall. Please do leave us a review at Apple Podcasts. Danke schon. Up the lines. No One Likes Us Clothing is the clothing range designed by Millwall fans for Millwall fans. Caps, t-shirts, polos, they've got it all. Visit noonelikesus.co.uk for the full range. Or if you're in Bermondsey on a match day, why not have a pint in the Blue Anchor pub and pick up a Nolu polo shirt, Nolu clothing at www.noonelikesus.co.uk.